Hello and welcome to another episode and today we've got two missions one to capture sunset and two which is the reason why I've come because we've got pretty clear skies and we've got a comet and uh, the comet's Leonard and when I get to this area here which I'll show you in a second I'll work out where the comet should be and I'm hoping it's not that way which I think it is because that's where the cloud is um, because it's quite low in the sky and we should be able to capture it an hour or so after sunset so I've got my coffee and my water, water coffee water and uh, a snack to eat while I settle down and hopefully capture an image or two but I thought I might as well come I want to get set up anyway for a night shot but I might as well come and uh, try and capture sunset as well so I've sort of come an hour earlier than what I really needed to ish um, and that's it really and I've come to the only place that's local enough for me where I can get to with the clearish skies and that's part of the Peak District and it's Magpie Mines. Now I was here at the beginning of this year-ish when we lockdown was over um, and it was the first place I come to I think after lockdown and uh, I was amazed by it. So we've got some good foreground interest and hopefully a comet in the background. <laughs> the comet is, I would say we've got about a 20% chance of catching the cop, but we never know, you never know. So I'm going to get up here, get my bearings, see where's north, south, east and west, and then try and suss out where that comet's going to be. Try and get a couple of images beforehand and uh, get set up for the night for a couple of hours. So hopefully I should be done by about six o'clock. So it's not going to be a late one because sunsets at about ten to four, I think. I've got a lovely bit of moon out at the minute. Uh, and if it was in the right direction, I'd try and capture that as part of the image. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll walk around the back of the the mine, uh, see if I can capture that. Uh, capture the moon. Where's the moon? Where are we? Somewhere over there, anyway. I don't know if I can see it. No. Okay. It's somewhere that way. Somewhere that way. Right. Now I've got some nice colour in the sky. Uh, so I'm going to walk around the back of this mine here, get a bit of B roll, and uh, see what we can find. And then, like I say, get it set up for a, a night shoot which I think is going to be where I've walked from, to be honest. Right, let me get my bearings. I think I was right what I was saying. If I'm going to see it over there, the problem we've got is got that bank of cloud there. So I'm hoping that's going to burn off because I think it's low on the horizon. But until it actually happens, I don't know. So I think what I'm going to do is, I was hoping to capture this moon in the shot and it's disappeared now behind the cloud. Uh, or it was there a minute ago. Yeah, it must have disappeared behind the cloud. So I was hoping to capture the moon in between here. Uh, but I don't think that's going to work, so what I'm going to do is 
I'm gonna walk around here and uh, see if I can set up a comp for later, at least if I know where to walk and have a little play. Okay guys, I've already set up, got my first image and I'm well happy. Managed to capture the moon um, and it's just to the the right of the uh, the mine shaft here. And I've just come over just to separate as um, a chimney just to the, the back side of it, the left hand side. And then we've got this building in the foreground. So I've just come to this one side just to give that a little separation. What it's done is shoved the moon slightly away, but um, I still think it works. And I might just try a quick um, portrait shot as well, because it might actually work better. And I might be able to squeeze in a little bit more with the, with the lens. New lens, um, swapped it for the um, full frame Zeiss 24-70. So this is a test for that, see how it is. Um, but at the moment, well happy. The sky over there is absolutely phenomenal. The colour is so, so strange. So I might have to work this quite quick and see if I can get a, a couple more images. So I'll just, just show you the image and what I've got. So we, what I've tried to do is get a little bit of separation here, look. So I've come to the left hand side and then the moon is there. Uh, and it looks really nice. And we've got a nice little bit of colour as you can see. So, uh, but I think it might work. Let's just move you forward. I think it might work as a portrait better. I think it will. So I think it will just fill the frame in that little bit more. So I'll probably set it around that area there. We'll refocus. Middle of the building. Just take that image. Jobs, jobs are good. Right, I th honestly think I need to to move and try and get some more images here. I'm, I'm getting a little bit excited already. <laughs> um, let's just hope we have a super dark sky and I can actually see what I've come for, which is that comet. Okay, let's have a little search around see what we can find. Captured a couple of quick images because the light was um, disappearing extremely quickly. But I think um, the comet will be straight in front of me here. Now, if it did come out and it was sort of in that area, I could actually try and get it near enough through the window of the, the, uh, the mill here. Not sure if that would work, but there's a potential there. Uh, so we're definitely going to be shooting from this side. Um, and it'll be a, uh, we'll try, I've got a couple of ideas, right, a real wide angle, um, but then we'll, the, the comet should be quite small. And I, I've got to be honest with you, I don't think I'm going to see it, to be honest, but, which will be a gutter, but I'm preparing for it. And then the other one is a right up in the corner here, long lens shot, um, but that'll be more difficult because of the, uh, the f-stop of the long lens. I can't remember if it's, I think it's 5.6, the lowest it will go down to. So that could cause me a lot of issues, but we won't know till we try it. So the long lens is my fastest lens. It's a, I think it's a two point, uh, my, my wide angle lens is my fastest lens. It's a 2.8, 14 mil. So we'll get, we'll get all of that in anyway. 
at the minute this is 24 mil at here again a nice leading line of this almost cut grass pathway through up into the mine there there's a nice little bit of color earlier uh, I manually, manually focused on the, the sack and took a bracketed shot um, f11 and it should actually be a real nice nice image that should uh, but yes the only light we're getting now is actually behind us um, but there's a lovely sort of tree here the only thing I'm thinking on should I go the other side and see if I can catch a this beautiful light that's behind me I think I'm gonna because I'm gonna have plenty of time so let's move down there and see if we can get something else very quickly in the next 20 minutes or so what's the time now yeah we've got another 10 minutes before that sun actually sets and then I think that light will disappear extremely quick um, because it's dropping beyond that bank there right let's go and try and get another image do really like this this gearing and with that moon behind I think it works really well so I think I'm going to try and get another image with this this moon incorporated in the shot the moon's getting quite bright now so it, it does look quite nice um, again I think it's going to work better as a portrait, definitely work better as a portrait shot. I can see that already straight away. Um, it's just about where I'm going to position everything to try and make it work. Just by moving that little bit, I've managed to put the gearing on the left hand bottom third of the image. And then we've got the moon on the top right of the image. But we've got, again, we've got this lovely pastel colours. Um, which are really, really making it nice. The problem I've got now is, is the gearing is just nearly on the horizon. So if I drop down, it's going to bring that, going to break that horizon. But I think I'd be better off coming up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is, yeah, I'm going to come up. I think it's going to look better. So I'll come up about eight inches. And the tripod in again. Now that's better. That's better. A lot of people they get the, the camera off the tripod um, and work an image and then get it on the tripod and, and finalise it like that. But what I like to do is is work arse backwards. <laughs> um, so I like to, I'll see a, something that I think is interesting. I'll get it on the tripod and then I'll start moving it around on the tripod, left, right, up and down. And I think that works for me and I think I feel in more control and I'll probably take an image have a look at it right okay let's see if we can improve on that and then move and move just slight little movements so I've been here 10 minutes taking this one image of this um, I'm just slightly improving it or I certainly think I'm improving it as I move along and then obviously get back and then the one that suits the one that I think's the nicest you'll be seeing um, you'll probably see the ones that are not quite as good as well because I'm never going to get um, what another thing I do I put all my images up it's very rare no that's not right I don't put all my images up because some of them are, are, are working to that main image but the main images I will always put them up whether I think they're worthy for a video or not and I think it just shows that you're first of all human which I definitely am because I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination um, I'm nowhere near but I, I do sometimes I come out and I think oh it's not a good image I've, I've got nothing but it's about the coming out and the trying that's the the issue with me I think so that's why I put an awful lot of images up you might not like them all but there might be one say hey that's actually not a bad shot and everybody's different as well Every lot, everybody likes different images so um, yeah that's my thought on it all uh, let me know what you think in the comments but um, 
while I'm talking to you, I think I've seen another image, but I need to get the long lens on for it. And what I like is, is the cloud. And we've got a tree with a cloud, and the cloud is superb. But I don't think this lens is going to be long enough to capture it. No, I need a slightly long lens, but the cloud is amazing. Okay, let's swap lenses quick. Oh, I can see it already. It looks stunning. The cloud is a stunner. This is one of them shots where you're not sure if it's going to work, but it's so interesting. We've got this, we've got a tree that it's almost lone, but there's a couple of bushes each side of it, which I'll probably clone out. And then we've got this beautiful bluish sky, and then it changes into turquoise and pinks, beautiful. Um, but then we've got, in between that, we've got this cloud. It's, it's um, a long thin cloud and it's a, got a lovely casting shadow on it but then a white top of this cloud so it's really nice and that's what's drawing me to this image trees nice and sharp bracketed sharp to bring all that color and detail out jobs are good i think i might move down there to see if i can incorporate this cloud a little bit more because i find it extremely interesting <laughs> Okay, let's go. Okay, I'm gonna talk you through this image because I think it's worth talking about very quickly. Um, what's drew me to the images? We're getting a nice reflection off this, this corrugated tin building to the, the sort of left hand side of the image. So what I've tried to do is incorporate this track as it runs through with, with part elements of the building all in there and the sort of travel diagonally from bottom left to top right in the image. So I like that. So it's got, it's got leading lines, it's got diagonal lines it's got lovely reflections and what I've tried to do is separate as much of the buildings as possible so we've basically got three structures we've got the shed area we've got the the mine head and then we've got the building behind there so uh, I've tried to just separate the pit head slightly from the building as best as I can without losing too much of the road if I go any further to the, the one side then it doesn't work so I'll try to do that uh, and I think it's a real nice image. I think it does work really well. And then we've got that lovely light as well, obviously in the background. So again, I bracketed the shot um, just to get all that detail in that sky. Because um, I, I haven't used a grad filter for ages. I'm just bracketing my shot and doing it in, in post. So again, that's another, another nice image. We're starting to lose a fair bit of that light, but what we are getting, by the look of it, it's either a star or a plane, I can't, I think it's a plane because it's moving. But the clouds are gradually disappearing, so it's exactly what I want. <laughs> it's, um, I'm a little bit excited, let's say. Fingers crossed, we're going to get some. It's only, believe it or not, it's only it's 20 past four. I think prime time will be about past five six o'clock when it's pitch black it's not a super dark sky area here by any means but i'm just hoping it's going to give me enough to capture the comet yeah i think so this this um this 
chimney here that sits on its own it's got it's a lovely it's a square chimney that's the round one that one's square don't know why obviously a reason for it it's got a lovely little gate on the just to the bottom right hand side of it uh, it's just a shame it's got two trees behind but they're just a little bit too close it's a shame then just just widened out a little bit just to separate the trees but it's still a nice image so i think i might catch that um we've got a bit of warm grass here as well that runs it up to it so again i think this one could be uh, a portrait Within this this transition hour now, where the sun, as you can see, is setting behind us there, and uh, we've got the moon out this side, which could cause a problem, but at least it's not directly in where the the comet should be. And I think the comet should be over here somewhere, because I think we've got Jupiter, Saturn. Uh, I think it's three planets that we might be able to capture tonight. Another planet there. The two strong ones of the planets forgot which planet it is i think it's jupiter and saturn might be wrong with that and i think the comet is below this area here i think so i'm hoping as that sun sets over there which looks absolutely stunning um, there's just a little band of gold left it's going dark the lights are on it it's it's only like i say it's not it's quarter five um so we've got plenty of time yet but yeah, hopefully we can start to see some sort of comet. I'm worried about this cloud, but it just seemed to keep rolling in and out, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but at least as, I, as you can see, it's moving, the clouds are moving quite quick. So hopefully we can uh, locate this comet, we can see it. I don't know what the, um, the luminosity of this comet is, the magnitude of it, but um, I've got a funny feeling this is one of the better nights, hopefully. <laughs> That's my plan anyway. Yeah. Um, so I will try and find out where this, to locate this comet a little bit more. And uh, I'm going to have myself a cup of coffee. Like I say, I've settled down. And uh, I'm going to have half an hour of doing absolutely nothing. I'm going to have me a coffee. I'm going to sit on the bank here and see if I can locate this. Uh, this comet we might just get a glimpse of, of it and if it does I'm heading up that, that way so maybe I should actually walk I might actually walk over there and sit down over there instead actually so I'm a bit close to the sort of location where I'm, I'm hoping to to capture everything uh, and then it's just a matter of waiting really if not we'll try and get a Milky Way shot eh <laughs> which I doubt uh, Right, okay, yeah, I think what I'll do, I'll move down there, it'll be out the window a little bit, just around the other side of there, keep me on this sky, and uh, see what we're gonna do. Okay, so we've got, we've got actually got three planets aligned. Jupiter's the top one, um, Saturn, and then Venus, which I think that bottom one there is Venus, and then the comet is over to the right here. So, um, at least I know where they all are, if nothing else, I should get a line of the three planets, um, and they're pretty much aligned with the the gable end of this this building here. So it might might actually make for a photo in its own, on itself, which is um, again it's something different because I don't normally see them three planets like. Uh, but yeah, so we're looking we're looking over this way. So I might need to move a little bit over there if we do see the comet. It's looking a little bit grim at the moment. <laughs> Right, definitely time for a cup of tea. Mm. Oh yeah. Nice. We're all set up. 
there's I, I might at the end of the night if i if i remember i might just get the three planets aligned and i'm just going to move back over there but for now because i want to concentrate on this comet if i see it and if that cloud drops a bit and it's it's illuminated enough there's no reason why i shouldn't see it um so i'm getting excited but the composition at the moment is i've got one planet to the right top right and the other planet to the bottom uh, top left and then the other planet to the bottom right uh, so i've set that up we've got the um there's a little outbuilding here which is where i was earlier uh, just in that right hand corner and it's just a matter of then of adjusting the uh, iso and exposure i'm on f4 i'm going to keep it on f4 for now but what I'm going to do is, and I'm going to do it before I forget, is get um, get the building in focus and then the stars in focus and probably do a longer exposure. So at least I've got one good exposure of the building so I can blend it later on in post. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, we'll focus on the building, get the building chart, and then, then I've got it. And all I've got to do then is focus on the stars or the comet when it comes out. So we'll do that, but that is my plan. That, that's all I've got to do. It's it's gone quite chilly, but it's not really too cold. So it's and I'm the only one here. I'm absolutely the only one here. I'm the only one mad enough to come out and try and capture it. I think tonight. But if I see it, it's a proper result because I went I went and photographed um, Neowise last year, and I thought it was amazing. I'll put a link up. Um, an half decent image and I got it from Elam Valley uh, now I'd have gone somewhere like that but it's cloudy everywhere else so this is for me the closer this is for the dark sky area so it's just a matter of um, biding my time but the the um, without a doubt these planets are very very bright indeed so it's just can't shame I can't incorporate the third one I've, we're trying to get it in between through the window but I can't quite see it and it's the lesser um, bright of the three planets but never mind it is what it is so yeah let me get that um, building nice and sharp and then all, all I gotta do is work on the uh, stars now if I move I'll have to do it all again so until I know where the actual comet is until I see it I'm just guessing where it is so which I think it's going to be just to the left hand side of this little building uh and to the right of the the main structure oh okay let me do my job I haven't seen no comet, but I think I've still got some nice um, night images of this this uh, mine here, Magpie mine. And what I have done as well is put myself in it for a couple of selfies. So I've had the head torch on, I put it on the intervalometer, ran up there, done some silly stuff, come back down, and I think one or two of them will hurt, so I'm quite happy with that. With the moon up, we're getting some lovely moon shadows and um, casting on the building so I'm going to try and catch them and use the shadows as a leading line I think uh, and maybe get it like a moon burst instead of a star burst or a sun burst try and get the moon bursting because I've seen an image from um, one of my friends uh, Grace Smith who done one I think he done it up Scotland somewhere on a lake oh and it worked really well so <laughs> I'm going to emulate that image uh, give me that idea uh, I've never thought of that before and uh, really really thoroughly liked it so I'm going to try and try and catch other shadows if I can't like I say I'm just going to get another half hour I think after that I don't think we're going to see it anyway so um, 
maybe if the where are you going? <laughs> the breeze got up and the breeze got up and blew you over then. <laughs> Wonder where you're off. Um so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do, try and get a few moon shots if not. But at least we've got we've got a couple of the planets aligned. I'm definitely gonna move over there and try and get all three planets if they're still visible, because obviously they're moving. And uh but no, I'm, I'm happy, I'm still happy. Still got some good images, hopefully, when we get back to process. And I've had a fabulous time. I've absolutely thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Not seen the comet, so what I've done is I've concentrated on um the moon and how it's casting shadows and things like that. So I've been walking around the mine and collecting some images. I think I've even got a moon burst. Uh, so I'm hoping, really hoping that works because it really gives a different, I love a moon, I love a burst, a sunburst, uh, anything like that. So uh, yeah, I'm hoping that's worked. We are, the skies are quite clear, but I think the comet's now dropped below the horizon. So, um, I think I've missed it. I think it needs to be an absolutely clear sky on the horizon, so uh, we'd be very lucky. But I still thoroughly enjoyed it. I think I've got some half-decent images. Absolutely loved it. Um, okay, I'm still on my own. It's only, it's only just gone. What's the time? It's five past six. And it feels like I've been here all night. So um, I'm going to head back. Uh, Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed this one. If you haven't done any night photography, get you a couple of torches, head torch, go out and try it. Uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Come to this place, somewhere where you can really work it. The moons, normally you wouldn't come out with, if you wanted star photography, you wouldn't come out with a, with a full moon, you'd come out with a new moon. But I think that moon's actually helped me tonight to get something else rather than the, uh, the comet. So until next time, Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.